There you go. Does everybody have one? There you go. There you go. Good. So, do you know how much God loves you? Is everybody? God loves you so much that he wants to bless you. Look at the scripture today. And God wants to bless you so much that he wants to lead your life and teach you how to live for him. This is one of my favorite scriptures. And when he comes, Jesus is speaking of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will speak to our hearts. And when he comes, he will convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. In other words, God will speak to us and say, this is what you should do that is right. And then he'll convict you, this is what you should not do. And there's consequences of each behavior. Let's look at some signs our society wants to teach us. What does that sign mean? You have a dog. Now, if you go into a place that has one of these signs and you don't listen to the sign, what might be the consequence? You go get by. You might get bited. <laughs> you, uh oh, but that dog might bite you in better English, my mom would say. So we've got to listen. What does that sign mean? A death sign. Oh, poison. You know, that's right. You don't want to eat or drink things that are poison. And what happens to you if you do drink a poisonous thing? You die. Ah, die? Yeah. yeah, we don't want that. What's the next one? Oh, what does that mean? No trespassing. Mm. Don't go on people property with yeah. their hands Especially during hunting season. What's the next one? Oh, uh, fire. Don't play with fire. What happens if you play with fire? You burn yourself. Yeah, that's bad, right? Yeah. 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 How about how about the next one? Hot surfaces. Has your mom ever told you? Don't touch the top of the oven. I did that before. Y yeah, and that'll hurt, won't it? I and you burn yourself, yeah, with his bad consequence. What's the next one? Stranger danger. This one is when I yeah, be careful if you don't know somebody. Ask a guardian. Let's go to the next one. One more, one more. What's that one mean? Electrocution. Don't put metal objects or anything in a light socket. Because you might get electrocuted. Now think about this. Let's bring it back together. Here, right here. So we have all these signs that are telling us don't do something that's bad. Yeah, this says I like you. So watch back to me. Let's focus. Welcome. Here, listen to me now. There are signs in society that tell us that it's dangerous to do certain things. But there's a sign that God gives us that shows us how much he loves us. Is he'll speak to our hearts to tell us what we should do and what we shouldn't do. And the question of your life is, do you listen to God? Does anybody here want to listen to God? When he tells you not to do something, that means he says, don't do that. That's sin. That doesn't please God. The most excellent gift our heart could have is a heart that wants to listen to God. Right here, children. So that's my prayer for you today, is that you would learn to hear God when he speaks to your heart, because God knows what's best for you. Pastor? Yes. One time, like, I watched this video about strength and danger, mm -hmm. and really this kid found, um, like, a stranger that was trying to kidnap her. Yes. And she was looking at her toy when her mom was gone, and he, and he acted like he knew her mom. Because he's trying to kidnap her and she said she didn't trust him. That's right. So it's very important to be careful about stranger danger. And if you're not certain about somebody, go ask your parents. Hmm. Let's pray and we'll go to children's church. Father, teach us how to listen to you. To be sensitive, God, to your spirit. That we can make good choices in life. To live a life that glorifies you. And I ask this, Jesus Christ, in your precious name. Amen. You can go to Children's Church now. Can I give you these back? No, you take them. Those are yours. I want you to keep a collection. Take it with you. Go ahead and go. Here. Do you want one? Okay. 
I want to speak to you today, church. You know, it's just so neat. Friday, went fishing. Yeah, nothing new about that. But we got stormed on. And it was like, wow, how did this ruin my good day? And then the Lord put on my heart, hey, make it a fantastic day. You can't control the weather. So we just went up to a restaurant and had some sushi. Anybody say, mm-mm, good? Or anybody say, have it all yourself, Daryl? And, you know, and God just started working, hey, make the best of things. Make the best of this. Then we drove low to the boat, driving home. And as I was praying... God started speaking to my heart. And one thing he spoke, and it is neat to see the church and positive things happening. Last week I had to put um, another row of chairs in the back and, and the back row Baptists were no longer the back row Baptists. I like that. And all of a sudden, you know, God's saying, be careful that you don't allow your blessings to be your downfall. Could it be that we could be blessed so much that it's no longer beneficial. Can anybody say possibly? In the Bible, one of the verses I love about wisdom is I don't want to be so poor that I defame the name of God by my actions. But God, help me to not be so rich But I become proud and turn my back on you. You see, God speaks that many times if we receive blessings and we're not careful, our blessings can become our downfall. And God was speaking to my heart, how then, Lord, and it goes with the scriptures, can I be certain that my blessings are truly blessings. And I'm positioned that you will say, let me bless you more. Because if we're not careful, God might say, I can't put blessings in your life because that's going to hurt you and not help you. And I say, Lord, teach me. Teach me. And he put three words on my heart. The first thing he was saying when you're being blessed, stay humble. It's not about you. Stay humble. Don't let pride come in your life. Whether it's your marriage, your business, your personal life, your church, stay humble. Secondly, be dependent. Because if you start thinking it's about you, you're going to start becoming self-dependent. Stay dependent so that every breath you take is from God Almighty. Every drop of drink of water you take is from God Almighty. Every source of food is from God Almighty. And unless God gives, I have nothing. Amen? Then lastly, stay sensitive to God speaking. You see, one thing I believe and the Bible says that we are under such advantages of a New Testament church. In the days old, God spoke through the prophets. But in that day, things were so spread out. Communication, there were gaps. They did not have the indwelling of the Holy Spirit like we have today. They had anointing, but for times and purposes, not throughout but in the New Testament church, God says the anointing of the Holy Spirit will come upon you. And he'll be your teacher. We are under such advantages of a, not only a connection throughout society, you can go anywhere and get messages. You can go on the internet and hear anyone speak. You can also, more importantly, at any time, no matter where you're at, driving back from the beach, Say, God, speak to my heart. Teach me what you want me to do. Teach me how to preach. Teach me how to live. We are in an age of connection. But to have such a connection, the key for my life is to be sensitive to God speaking. How many of y'all believe God speaks? God speaks. God can teach. 
You know, it's so neat. Last week, I had something really bad hurt my feelings. Oh, frustrated me. I had to go lay down. I was so upset. My trolling motor on my boat stopped working. Man. I figured it had to be batteries. Switched the batteries out on the remote thing or jigger. Didn't work. Started checking other things. Didn't work. And I'm thinking, you know, cheap old me. Man, this is going to be expensive to pay someone to fix it. Anybody else ever think like me? That hurts my feelings. Here, here's, here's the deeper truth. I get so frustrated. And anybody knows me. When I get frustrated, I need to put myself in time out. Went back and lay down. And those words that you've heard me say, God, I know you can teach me how to fix this. I know you can teach me what's wrong. How many of y'all believe God can teach us many deeper and wider things? I say, God, I know you can teach me. And I'm telling you, I shall. He wasn't but just about a minute. I pop out of bed like I'm on overdose of caffeine, run out to the boat, grab my light tester, and the Lord put it on my heart. You check that voltage going all the way back, and you start here. So I went there, pulled things apart. I never pull apart a trolling motor again, but I'm, I'm telling you, and I know some of y'all are looking at me like I'm strange. That's okay. I'm used to it. I found exactly where the problem was. And then when I found the connection, that the two things connected together, if I look real closely with my glasses on because I can't see that good up close, I see barely where it overheated and the plastic melted away. And I said, oh Lord God, you're amazing. How many of y'all think God is absolutely amazing? See, the problem with the trolling motor, it got overheated and it lost its connection. And the power source didn't go to the motor. And if we're not careful, we're going to get overheated by the trials and temptations of life. And the power source of God's Holy Spirit in us is going to... The Bible says your conscience that God speaks through can get seared like a hot iron. Your conscience can become unbeneficial where you're not connected. I wonder if we're not careful in this world. Our conscience becomes unhealthy. And then the connection to God Almighty that wants to speak to us throughout the day isn't there. Everybody with me? So the key for our lives is, God, right here is where I need to be healthy. God, in your word today, help us all to see that when God speaks to the heart, he's speaking to our conscience. And when he speaks to our conscience, God is unlimited in what he can teach you. And thus, God is all powerful and he's given us his spirit. Are we positioned to hear him? Anybody say amen? Wives or wives-to-be. Do you ever get to a point that you wonder if your husband is a little insensitive? There you go. (laughs) I knew it was coming. I wonder what would happen in our marriages if we said, God, help me to be more sensitive. Not only, God, do I want to be sensitive to you, God, I believe you can keep me sensitive to others. See, I know that all things are permissible, God, but I know not all things are beneficial. God, teach me to be sensitive to my relationships, that the things I do and say are beneficial. How many of you think our lives would soar? Anybody say amen? Please stand for the reading of God's holy word.
1 John chapter 3, verses 21. Beloved, I'll start over, verse 19 through 24. Verse 19. And by this we know that we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. For if our hearts condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. Beloved, if our hearts does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. And whatever we ask, we receive from Him because we keep His commandments and do those things that are pleasing in His sight. And this is His commandment, that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave us commandment. Verse 25. And now He who keeps his commandments abides in him and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the spirit he has given us. Let us pray. Father, as I stumbled a little bit to find this scripture, I know you don't stumble. God, bless this message. Help us, God, to be receptive and sensitive to you. Help us, God, not to outgrow our blessings and become proud and independent. Help us, God, to hear your voice. And I ask this, Christ Jesus, in your precious name, amen, and you may be seated. The most beautiful thing we see here is is God is saying, listen, listen, listen. He says, and by this. So he's saying, by this. And all of a sudden, the assurance of your heart, God speaking to you. That's how you can know God loves you and he's directing you. Listen to this. And by this, we know we are of the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. By this you know, as God speaks to your heart, God speaking to your conscience, God loves you and God can teach you and will teach you mighty things. He'll teach you how to love and deed and truth and go beyond and do more than you ever thought you could do. Paul taught us to listen to our conscience. In Acts 23, 1, he says, then Paul, looking earnestly At the council said, men and brethren, I have lived in all good conscience before God until this day. You see, God will speak to our conscience. God will teach us how to live. And we all know what it's like to have a a guilty conscience. We all know what it's like to have a conscience where God says, well done, way to go, encourage our hearts. But on both accounts, God is going to speak to our hearts. And first he starts with being teachable. And I have found in my life the most important thing for me to be is teachable. What if we never get to the point that we stop being teachable by God? God, teach me new things. Teach me greater things. Teach me, God, to be more like your son. And the Bible says, for if our heart condemns us, we're like, ah, God is greater than our heart and knows all things. And I sit and I think, well, Lord, how can it be good for me when I get condemned? How can it be good for me, God, when I get corrected? How can it be good for me, God, if I feel guilty? And God says, don't you know I'm a good father? And a good father corrects his children? But God, I feel condemned. Don't you know that's a sign that God loves you? A greater problem is if you can do wrong and feel good about it. Anybody say amen? Being teachable, God says, God is greater than our heart. When your heart condemns you, this is a learning time. This is a teachable moment. God, I feel condemned that something I did was wrong. 
And God says, let me teach you how to do right. Let me help you grow beyond this. It's interesting. Then we say, then how does God teach us? Well, one way is the Holy Spirit talks to us and say, that's not right. That's sinful. That doesn't please God. That's not in his word. He teaches us through the power of the Holy Spirit speaking to our conscience. He teaches us through the word of God to remind us this is God's word on the subject. And he teaches us by others. How many people in here like getting corrected? Anybody? I pray that we'll all have friends that are friendly enough to correct us when we're wrong. And starting with me, we all need a friend that will correct us. Anybody say amen? You see, God uses his body of believers to come and say, hey, let's rethink this. Hey, this doesn't make sense to me. Hey, let's sit and talk. Hey, I think you're going in a wrong direction in life. You see, God loves us so much that many times he'll send the Holy Spirit to convict us. He has his word to convict us. And he says, if that hasn't got your attention yet, I'm going to send a leader of the church to talk to you. Now, I'm telling you, that's not easy when it happens. I don't like it. But it happens. Everybody say amen. You see, one thing I've learned from the very beginning of being a pastor almost 20 years ago, you see, I had senior pastors that retired and I was their pastor at 34 years old and they were in their 60s and 70s. One man was Chester South, another man, Reverend Harold Ross. And I was their pastor, but they were so much more um, further along in biblical studies and understanding God's word than I, I was and probably am. And you see, many times they would come to me on a Monday morning and they would sit with me. You see, they would never do it publicly. They didn't want to embarrass their pastor. They wouldn't disrespect their pastor, but they would come and sit and say, Daryl, let's talk about this. Many times it had to do with scriptures. Let's rethink the depth of the scripture. And what happened was I would challenge them and go study. And I'm telling you, 100% of the time, I would find out they were right and I was wrong. Can anybody say amen? And because I was approachable and because I would be teachable, those men are partly um, God's blessing of where I'm at today. Anybody say amen? So listen, we get taught by the Holy Spirit in a number of ways. One, God will speak directly to our heart. And he says, that is sin. I'm convicting you it's sin. And it doesn't have to go this way. You don't have to have the consequences. You can turn now and be blessed. And God will speak by his word of God that will say, that's not right. And then God will love you so much, he'll send a brother and sister in Christ. And they will talk to you regarding this. And that's how much God loves us. And the question of our lives is, will we be approachable? Will we listen? And will we be taught? Amen? What if we just started saying, God, do whatever it takes that my heart can be open to your correction. I know you're greater than my heart. I know you're greater than my sin. I know you're greater than the mistakes I make. And God, I know you're able to speak to me. God, give me a teachable spirit. For if my heart condemns me and tells me what I'm doing is wrong, that means God, that means that you're teaching me. God, may I never be blessed so much that I become proud, self-dependent, and no longer teachable. May my position in society, in my family, or in my church, may that position never take me to the point that I become proud and self-dependent and unteachable. 
May I never grow to a point in my life, God, where I'm insensitive to you. And and these are just some of the things that I've learned from years of study in psychology, Christianity and psychology together in one discipline. And I do it in marriage counseling. Many times one spouse will come to me and say, you know, this is what's going on. It's hurting our marriage. I'll sit down with both of them and I'll say, hey, explain to your spouse what's going on. And they'll usually tell them, this is your fault. This is what you did wrong. And then usually that goes back and forth. The other one looking at them and saying, no, this is what you did wrong. And this is what you did wrong. And and it's a six-shooter of an argument. Do you all know what it means to have a six-shooter argument? It's not about guns. It's about mentality. You load up your mind with all the faults of your spouse or whoever you're upset with. And in your mind, you're just shooting them one at a time. You say, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you did this wrong. And after a little bit, you run out of breath. And when you run out of breath, you have to get your breath. And while you're getting your breath, you're reloading your mind, what you're going to shoot out next to them. And the other person is just sitting there, and they got shot, and they got shot, and they got shot. But they're not listening to that, because the whole time they're getting shot, they're just (gasps) taking their breath and loading their mind. And they're saying, no, but this you did wrong, and you did wrong, and you did wrong. And it's so interesting as a a Christian... um, counselor and and marriage or wherever just to watch them shoot each other and shoot each other and I watch there's no communication and all of a sudden I'll I'll get enough of that because I could be home with my family and not listen to you two and I'll say to them now wait a minute what did your spouse just say to you oh well they said this and this and this is how I did wrong I say, okay, how does that make them think? Well, it makes them think insecure. It makes them think, I don't care. Okay? How does it make them feel? I can see it's making them feel very sad. And and, and do you see what just happened? In the counseling, we went beyond that this is wrong to this is what they're thinking and feeling. And it's so neat when I do the counseling and all of a sudden they go deeper in understanding thoughts and feelings beyond offense. Their hearts are opened and now they're communicated and to see the spouse become sensitive to how an action is affecting their spouse. Can anybody say amen? And all of a sudden they're saying, I didn't know this is how it affected you. I didn't know it made you feel that way. Hey, listen, I don't want you to feel that way. And it's so beautiful to see them rethink about the action then. But here's the key is to get life in a time out so the heat of the moment, the anger of the moment, the frustration of the day, the stress of life just says, wait a minute. And then I ask them, pray. Ask God to teach you how your spouse feels. Well, I never thought about praying about that. I said, well, wouldn't that be the most sensitive way for me to pray that the Holy Spirit will now is going to teach me how they're feeling, what they're thinking? God, as I pray, convict me of what I can do to make them feel more loved. And this is the most beautiful thing. And and my purpose is to bring the Holy Spirit to move in their hearts. To bring them into a point they're sensitive to God's leading. Now let's go back out of the marriage to our individual lives. 
What if we did the same when God convicts us? When we feel the conviction that what we're doing is wrong. We say, God, I want to be teachable. God, teach me how this makes you feel. Teach me, God, what you're thinking. You see, when the Bible says, and I've spent extra time here this morning, God is greater than our heart. God is almighty. And he wants to teach us great things. What would be the end result when our heart is condemned? That we can say, God, thank you for teaching me. Thank you for teaching me to be a better Christian. Thank you, God. In Hebrews 12, 5 and 6 makes sense. My son, do not despise the chastising of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastises and scourges every son he receives. And see, that's how my heart can be continually blessed and assured before God when God is continually teaching me how to be his child, how to live in a world that glorifies to glorify him. Oh, yes, God, it's nice when you can get my mind together and think and focus and go work on things that I don't know how to work on. It's nice, God, that you can teach me things. Oh, but God, I know more importantly that is you teaching me how to live for you every day to please you God speak to me open my heart and speak to me I've spent extra time right there because one of the things that a lot of people struggle with is that what do you mean God when I am condemned you're greater than my heart God says when you're feeling condemned God has a great purpose in this because he's all powerful you see, the Bible says, now listen, what happens when we're not sensitive to God's Spirit? What happens when God's putting up those stop signs and convicting us of sin and we ignore it? In Timothy 1, 1 Timothy 1, 18, 19, God speaks about a shipwreck of a life. One of the hardest things of being a pastor is watching people and counseling people. And you're watching their life. We use the word train wreck. They use shipwreck. And we're watching it go. We're watching it go. And we're saying, if you don't get a hold of this, a shipwreck is coming. You know, you go on uh, any old videos on YouTube and you'll see shipwrecks or bad boat drivers. And you're like, what are these people thinking? Don't they see that coming? And God says, I see a shipwreck coming and I am talking to your heart. I'm talking to your life and I don't want that for my child. Listen, stop, turn, repent. And it says, this I charge you, my son Timothy, according to the prophecies previously made concerning you, that by them you may wage the warfare, the good warfare. You don't have to have a shipwreck. You can have a warfare in your heart and you can stop these things that the devil wants to bring you down, roads you shouldn't enter. Listen, let your conscience hear. And it says, having faith and a good conscience, there's the power. Faith, God, your word, your way is the very best, a good conscience, God, that I can hear your spirit. My conscience is alive, my conscience is healthy, and I can hear your spirit. And God says, if you would have the faith to know God's way is best and the conscience that is healthy to hear God's word, this is what he says will come alongside that. Having faith and a good conscience, which some have rejected. He's speaking to the church. Concerning the faith, have suffered shipwrecked. You see what I'm saying? Most of the major problems that life brings can be avoided if we would stop and hear God say, I want to be teachable, God. I want to be correctable, God. But God, I need to have a conscience that will hear you. And God, if it comes through the Spirit speaking directly to my heart, if it comes through your word that speaks to me, or if it comes through another believer, I will receive my corrections and be a better man of God for it. Can anybody say amen? This is the power the Lord wants us to live with. Be teachable. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence towards God. You see, when we're teachable, 
and we make the changes necessary and we'll live for our Lord and all of a sudden we're living and, and we're living to please Him and God says, if your heart doesn't condemn you because you're living with a good conscience and with sincere faith, look what He says happens to our prayer life. And whatever we ask, we receive from Him because we keep His commandments and there's obedience and there is God's blessings. Oh, Lord, that's the life I want to live. A life where I'm hearing your word, your voice, and I'm living for you. And I have confidence that I'm living in your will. I'm praying in your will. You're answering my prayers. I am keeping your commandments. And I'm doing those things that are pleasing in your sight. Just like Jesus Christ says, I always do those things that please my Father. Oh, yes, Lord, let that be our lives. And God says, this is where you begin. And this is the commandment that we should believe of the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. To believe, faith, love each other. What if we started praying, God, teach me how to love each other. Teach us how to love each other. Teach me how to love those in my lives. Oh God, it's your commandment. May I grow in faith. May I grow in love. May I believe the gospel. May I obey the gospel. And the Bible says, Now he who keeps his commandments abides in him, and he in him. And by this we know that he abides in us by the Spirit that he has given us. You see, I've spent extra time today on one verse. If my heart feels condemned, I praise God anyway. If my heart tells me I'm wrong, I praise God anyway. I'm not going to be like the world that gets mad when someone corrects me. I'm not going to be like that before correction is good for the soul. And God, I want you to speak to me. And Jesus said, back to our children's message. And when He comes, speaking of the Holy Spirit, how many of y'all think it's silly when I ask God to teach me how to fix things like a trolling motor? How many of you think, well, that makes sense? You can ask God to teach you anything. How much more do I need to be taught this? Convict me of sin. God, if it takes the Holy Spirit deep into my heart, making me feel conviction, teach me so I'll avoid sin. God, if it takes a verse keep coming in my life to teach me my actions are wrong, Teach me. God, if it takes another believer to come to me and approach me and correct me, teach me. God, let me never become unteachable. May I never be so proud to think I'm without sin. Anybody say amen? May I never become so proud to think I'm without making mistakes. Teach me. And God, as you teach me and convict me of wrong, Oh God, don't leave me there in the middle. Teach me of righteousness. Teach me of righteousness. Teach me what you would do, Jesus. Holy Spirit, teach me. And lastly, God, teach me of judgment. You see, God is going to judge this world. And He's going to judge me. Oh, Lord God, when you judge me, Lord, I know I'm under grace and mercy, but I want your judgment to say, that's my Daryl. That's my boy who's listening to me. His blessings he hasn't outgrown. His blessings he hasn't taught him to turn his back on me. I bless him more. But if the judgment on me would be, I've blessed him so much and look what it's done. 
It's taken Daryl away from me. It's taken him away from listening. See, the right thing for God to do then is hold back some of those blessings. Anybody say amen? Oh, Lord God, may I live a life that you would say, I want to bless him. Because he hears and he's sensitive. As I close this message, I'm asking you this. Are you sensitive to God's teaching? Is your heart humble today? Dependent and sensitive. You see right now what I believe it's God is going to do. He's going to speak to our hearts to say, this part of your life is not what I want for you. This part of your life, this segment of your life, you've put it aside. But God says, I want to address that right now. Because I don't want that in you. This unforgiveness, this anger, this problem, this sin. God says, if you would open your heart for me, I've got so much in store for you. But will you listen? When we sing this invitation, if there's anything in your life that God's saying, it's time for this to be gone, I want you to come. You don't have to come to me. Come to the altar and pray and give it to God. Maybe you've stopped listening. And you just come and say, God, I open my heart to you. It's been shut. I'm here, but I've already drifted away. Take me home. Take me home close to you so I hear you. Maybe you've never given your life to Jesus Christ. You've never been convicted that your sin has separated you from God. And your sin will be judged. And your sin will keep you out of heaven. never been convicted of the righteousness of Jesus Christ and His death on the cross that you can have forgiveness of sins and you've never made Him your Lord and your Savior. Maybe you've never been convicted that judgment's come and you need Jesus. Maybe you've never been convicted that Christ took your judgment and He wants you to take His grace his mercy and his righteousness and come and give your life. You see, that verse is all about salvation. If you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, it's time to come.